Hello everyone, Yellow Scores Camp here from Team Infinity. I'm about to unbox and build this Infinity IF142 110 scale electric touring car right now. So let's see what's inside. Dear customer, welcome to World Championship Infinity. Stickers, manual, all the parts for the car from back A to the, till back G, a top deck, a bumper and the most important, the chassis. So I will start from the manual and I uh, will start with back A and that's the differential. Back A, differential and the front spool. Starting with the differential, I uh, use uh, 8000 for a default diff oil, it's a good uh, it's a good compromise, and 500 shock oil to grease the steel shafts inside. So and the O-ring as well. So we first gonna fit the O-ring inside the diff and the bearing for the diff is in the ball bearing bag. The outdrive comes with a pin and an o-ring to lock it and always check if this is smooth. A little bit of play. Now the other side. Do the same. A drop of silicone oil on the o-ring. The outdrive. The pin. And the o-ring so put the big gear inside and now comes the trick put the weight scale and put it on zero and we need about a 1.4 gram of silicone diff oil to have the right amount of oil inside if there's too much oil in the diff when you're running, the diff will lock lock up too much. So that's why uh, around 80% has to be full. So 1.4 gram, that's the right amount of oil. Now we put on the small gears. And the oil. Put on the big gear on top. Don't forget the O-ring. And always make sure that this edge matches with this. So with the differential nothing major. Just make sure you don't over tighten the screws. So now the front spool, this is uh, fairly easy. You can use aluminium screws of course for, for this. It's a nice lightweight, but I built it as a kit, so I use a standard steel screws. Don't over tighten again. And now comes the outdrive. This is a 10 millimeter steel screw and again don't over tighten. So this was the assembly of the diff and the spool. So next up is back B, the shocks. Let's see what's inside. Springs, shock cap, spring holders, o-rings, 
piston, shock body. First, I always disassemble the plastic and check if it's smooth. Otherwise, take a small knife and make it smooth. So everything is spread out on the table. And first, I'm gonna put the piston on the shock shaft. And this is a whole new system. Put the shim and put the piston on top. And this design now is with the little screw. So the advantage of the screw fixing the piston is that you can have more volume in the shock. Don't over tight. So the assembly of the piston on the shock shaft is done. So now it's time to put the o-ring inside the shock body and we do it with a small drop of silicon oil again 500 for the shock it's a good default one o-ring white cap and the aluminium so now we put the o-ring inside the adjuster nut Put a little bit of silicone again and screw it on the shock body. So that's done. Now I'm gonna put the shock shaft inside the shock body and check if it's smooth and free. So now I'm gonna assemble the shock bow end. And first I'm gonna make some thread and I do that with a five millimeter screw in and out. So there's thread now in the plastic, makes it more easy to put on. Have the shock shaft tool and put it on the shock shaft. And I usually have it around 9.5 millimeter. Just put the shock oil inside the shock. And for this one I use 500. Usually we are between 450 and 525, so around 500 is fine. As you can see, if you put the silicone inside, you have some air. It's a handmade shock stand, no problem, it does the job. So now I wait till the air is out of the shock. In the meantime, you can do the rest of the shocks. And move the shock up and down to let the air come out quickly. And fill the shock up almost to the edge of the shock body. Now the air is all out of the shock, so we're gonna close the shock. I usually use no rebound, so I push the shock end all the way up, put the piston as high as possible. I take the shock bladder put it on top and let the shock bleed take away the oil take the shock plastic cap and close it and hold the shock end all the way to the shock body and close it this is how you make zero rebound so push it push it in and it stays. So now we have to put the ball nut in the plastic of the shock. Quite a handy tool. You can also do it with the pliers. But make sure it's always flat, make sure it's free. So the shock is built. Uh, the only thing what I do now is I'm gonna put the spring adjuster all the way to the top and try to get the white arrow exactly in the middle with the cap. So you always know where you are when you adjust the right height. So you're gonna now I make one, two, three laps and that's my starting point for the right height and I will do that with all four shocks 
Now I'm gonna put the spring on, the spring retainer, and it's done. That was the assembly of the shock.